Hello, good morning. Now we're gonna find the derivative of a radical function using limits. All right, this is a not so easy exercise. It's gonna be a nice exercise. All right, let us get to work. So the instruction says, find the derivative of the following function using the limit that defines derivatives. We're giving this function, f of x is equal to the square root of one plus two x, okay? The challenge is to find f prime, which is the derivative. The formula or the rule is the definition of a derivative. f prime of x, the derivative, is defined as the limit as x approaches zero of the function at x plus delta x minus f of x, the original function, all over delta x. Remember that this definition comes from uh, the slope of a tangent line. The slope is always y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 delta y on delta x. So that's why uh, we have this subtraction here. And in the case of a derivative, delta x becomes infinitely small. Remember that the secant line becomes a tangent line. And then that's what we're finding here. All right. So um, before we get started with the limit, we have to find the function at x plus delta x by replacing x plus delta x instead of x in the function. Okay. Once we have that, we can proceed and write down um, the limit in the top of the fraction, the numerator, we begin with the radical for the function at x plus delta x, all right? Then we have a subtraction. It's always gonna be minus, remember, because it's y2 minus y1, always a subtraction here. And then the next term after the subtraction is the original function as it is, just the original function as it is. The denominator is always going to be delta x and it's always gonna be approaching zero. Now we have to evaluate the limit. There are basically three techniques to evaluate limits, either direct substitution or factoring or the conjugate method. The conjugate method is the one we're gonna use in this case because we have radicals. The conjugate method looks kind of strange, but it's actually not that hard if you remember your basic algebra and are very careful in doing everything step by step. We take the original um, numerator this is our original numerator. And we are going to multiply the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction by the conjugate. If the original numerator had a negative, we're gonna, we're gonna take and multiply by the same, but with a positive. If you remember your algebra, when you have two binomials conjugates like a plus b, a minus b, they multiply to give you the difference of two squares. This is very useful in this case because it's gonna help us simplify and evaluate our limit. So we have two conjugates. This is a conjugate of this, right? When you multiply, you can get rid of the square roots, which is really, really helpful in this case. Okay, so binomial conjugates, difference of the squares, the difference of the term with the root, when you square it, you get rid of the root. Again, with the second term, it had a root. When you square it, you get rid of the root. So that was the hardest part. We we're, we're, we're just have to clear with some, some sound algebra now. We have to do the distributive property, two times x, two times delta x, negative times one, negative times two x. And now, we can add like terms, like one minus one, two x minus two x. So this is really nice because in the top of the fraction, all we're gonna have is two times delta x. The goal for this part is to get rid of the division by zero. And it's looking good because we can now divide by delta x and get rid of that. So. If we move on, we can divide delta x divided by delta x. That gives us one, one times two is two. And then we're gonna have a nicer algebraic expression. Now we can give x the value of, we can give delta x the value of zero, all right? Just before that, we're gonna multiply two times x and two times delta x, okay? 
And now, since we don't have a delta x multiplying in the denominator, we can assign, we can substitute delta x for zero. So this is gonna be getting nicer and nicer. Since two times zero is zero, of course, look at the bottom of the fraction, look at the radicals in the denominator. They are exactly the same, right? So you can add those two radicals, right? And when you add those two radicals, one radical plus another radical gives me two radicals. And this is pretty much the derivative. All we have to do is divide, or we can simplify, two divided by two gives me one. And we're pretty much done. Um, you can just express that without the limit notation anymore because we have evaluated the limit. And this is the answer. This is the derivative we were looking for when we were given the function the square root of one plus one plus two x the derivative we found is one over the square root of one plus two x okay there are other techniques this is the one technique that we wanted to use finding a limit using finding a derivative using limits okay this is it for now thank you very much let us know if you have any questions thank you very much take care